Thank you, Leah. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to speak to so many people who are concerned about uh, the future of our country and our world. Um, <clears throat> I guess my charge today is uh, not specifically immigration, but rather the impact of our growing population on our natural environment. And um, <clears throat> I uh, have a quote from Yogi Berra, who was a star baseball player for the New York Yankees when I was growing up in New York uh, City. And the reason I like uh, Yogi's quote uh, um, is because I think it applies especially to my charge for today, which I'll come to on the next uh, slide. But before I do that, I just wanted to set the stage for where we are um, seated today in terms of uh, the impact of human beings uh, in general on the environment. And uh, um, as you can read for yourself here, the uh, um, <clears throat> our animals, uh, our domesticated animals, our pets and our livestock and our own biomass account for 98% of the vertebrates uh, on, on land and in the air. And that leaves very little for um, all the other creatures on Earth. And it's for this reason that many of us, including myself, are, feel we really need to deal with issues like U.S. and world population growth. And um, actually, okay, I have one more slide before we get to uh, um, the one I just referred to. The uh, um, when w overpopulation, in my opinion, is not an, is not a uh, cut and dried kind of a question. Um, there uh, are people who think that a world with 98 or even 99.9 percent .9 of the biomass in, in in human beings and our Pets and livestock is just fine, and uh, it's a matter of, uh, of personal judgment and ethics and whatnot. So um, there really is no sort of right or wrong uh, answer to the question of what's overpopulated or not. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, I think it, one thing that is, the, is true is that it's very difficult to um, determine what's going to be happening in the future in, in the spirit of Yogi Berra's uh, uh, quote, um, the, uh, I think in my, in my personal opinion that um, uh, catastrophic events, um, probably more than one, are going to really determine the future of, the, 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 of, the, of this century and, and probably the next one, um, rather than rational decisions of human beings. And um, for that reason, um, I think that trying to predict how population growth will affect the environment of the United States is uh, somewhat of an academic exercise. So although I will spend a few uh, part of my time addressing um, the charge and the title of my presentation, I also want to um, discuss something about conservation and consumption and population issues that um, came up yesterday at Bill Ryerson's uh, conference. So just to show you sort of where, oops, where we're at um, and where we've been, so this compares the United States population in uh, hundreds of millions from the year 1900 to projected out to 2100. Basically, this gray uh, bar indicates um, the, uh, um, the rough uh, boundaries between the Census Bureau's lower, uh, a middle and upper uh, um, projected population 100 years out, and you can see how enormous it'll be compared to what it was in 1900. So uh, I just want to mention two, two aspects of, of, of how this, um, the next, uh, say, 90 years will impact um, the United States. One has to do with uh, biodiversity and the other has to do with agriculture. So this is a, a, a picture of the uh, uh, some of the biodiversity hotspots. So the red spots indicate uh, the, the uh, major areas of biodiversity in the U.S. And um, all right, so there, th these are the biodiversity hotspots. Um, we heard uh, 
uh, yesterday about the uh, um, fact that, that population growth over the last few decades has been uh, in negatively impacting Chesapeake Bay over, over here, and is gonna, it's going to get a lot worse uh, in, the, in the coming few decades. I want to just focus a few remarks on what's going on in California where you, and Nevada, where you can see there's a lot of biodiversity. Um, this is the population density. Um, graph, a human population density graph of ca in California, and if you put these two together, you can see where the people are, are is, where the, the, uh, is where a lot of the biodiversity is, and without going into details, I can tell you from my own experience that we're just constantly having battles in California, um, fighting to save these biodiversity hotspots from the erosion of, of sprawling human populations. And just to, to see how up you are in California, does anyone know which, which is more densely populated, California or, or Europe? Cal must be California, I wouldn't be asking you, that's right. <laughs> um, it's been actually more densely populated than Europe for, uh, for quite a few years now, and I was just at a conference, uh, uh, German uh, Cal uh, California Solar Conference in at UCLA last week, and they, one of the speakers specifically mentioned that California is as densely populated as Germany, just to give you, and we don't think of Germany as a low density uh, re region of the earth. Um, and this, this graph shows you uh, basically where we are now at whatever population you can read off of there, that's sort of already higher than the population density of Europe. And by the time we get up to around 2040 or so, we get up about 50 million people in California, another just few decades, we'll be more densely populated than China is now. So we're going to pass China, and as you know, China's trying to do something about their population growth. Obviously, we're not trying to do anything about California's population growth. So that's sort of um, the, the little bit I'll say about biodiversity. Now I want to switch to agriculture. In the uh, late 1940s, what was the uh, number one county in the entire United States in terms of dollar value of agricultural products? Los Angeles County, where I live. And yet, 40 years, by 40 years later, sometime in the 1980s, um, the, according to the way census, the Census Bureau defines uh, urban areas, the uh, um, Los Angeles County had, had already become the most densely populated urban area in, in the entire United States. So in a mere 40 years or so, we've gone from the number, number one agricultural uh, county to the most densely populated urban area. That's how fast these things can, can, can transpire. And um, the Central Valley is next. Uh, at a symposium I organized at UCLA uh, a little over a decade ago, the title up here. Um, one, of the one of the speakers was a representative of American Farm Land Trust, and he described a projected business as usual future for the Central Valley. He mentioned that now um, something like, I think, 25% of fresh fruits and vegetables and maybe 50% of the nuts or something in the entire United States come from the California Central Valley. But he said at the, at, if you just project out to the year 2080 with the uh, land use uh, policies or lack thereof in the Central Valley, by 2080, and not only would California not, be, uh, not only would the Central Valley not be able to, f to feed a good portion of the United States, it wouldn't even be able to feed itself. It would not be self-sufficient um, in food in 2080. So you can see that since the transformation that took place in Los Angeles County agriculture in 40 years, this is just entirely reasonable. Another 70 years, this, this, whole, this will all be gone. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, Stuart Hurlbert uh, yesterday mentioned uh, at Bill Ryerson's meeting uh, this uh, special section on population that uh, um, uh, was uh, appeared in uh, Science Magazine um, recently, and um, and basically what you can read here is what Stuart said in, in words yesterday at Bill's meeting. The the problem is we have this uh, deafening silence about these kind of population issues and. Um, and, uh, and filling up the Central Valley or harming biodiversity. Um, and uh, um, the reason why we feel that it was so important for science to say something about U.S. population issues, even though they didn't, is this statistic from the last 20 years that China and India added far more people than the United States, but because of our high per capita uh, impact um, our 60 million increase was actually the most environmentally damaging in the entire world during this 20-year period. 
And a good part of the reason um, why um, we're so damaging is comes from this uh, Newsweek uh, cover. Um, we to get out of the recession, we have to start spending more. And in other words, in order for us, our system, system to work, we have to keep our per capita um, consumption really high. And that's the contradiction here between our society and environmental sanity. And, um, and, and basically, so I say here that this is, this is uh, why um, um, U.S. population growth was, was uh, more damaging to the environment than these, these, other, these other countries. And we should not expect U.S. Per, per capita consumption to decrease voluntarily when we're being encouraged to spend more and consume more. And this consumption actually involves both personal and communal decisions. Um, uh, the, the communal ones are often um, out of our individual's control. And uh, the bloated military U.S. budget, which I don't think was ever mentioned yesterday, um, is uh, a really important um, player in this field. It was the single biggest energy consumer in the world. And yet what are we progressives to do about this? Um, it's really hard to avoid supporting this. Uh, um, this is part of the military-industrial complex that President Eisenhower warned us about 60 years ago. And um, it's really taken over now. And you know, so much money is being spent on this and wasted on it. Uh, but as I say, there's not too much we can do about a lot of these communal aspects of consumption. But we can do something about person, our personal decisions. And um, unfortunately, it's very hard to do the right thing. The problem is, even though there are a lot of poor people in the United States, there are also a lot of very well-to-do people. And if you've got a lot of disposable income, um, it often makes it hard to do the environmentally responsible thing. Um, if you can afford uh, more than two children, um, many people have it because have them because they think, you know, why not? I've got the money; I can support them. Um, and uh, really, we all know for sure in this room that that families should should stop at two or fewer children. Frankly, if you want to actually have the uh, world population go down from seven billion or nine billion or whatever, um, we really need to uh, have one or zero or one child, even two children, is not really going to accomplish our goal. Um, people do not uh, people eat much too much meat in the United States, and it's very hard to get people to stop doing this, even at environmental conferences. And one can, can have photovoltaic panels um, on one's roof, and yet in Los Angeles, even though this is certainly something that can be afforded by many, many people, almost nobody does it. The panels might cost ten or $15,000. People won't put them on the roofs, but they wouldn't think twice about spending fifty or $100,000 to remodel their kitchen, ten times as much as the panels cost, yet the panels don't go up. 